Thank you. No, thank you, man. Thank you for having me. How's everything going? How's uh, how's life? How's uh, we 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 got to talk. There's a there's there's a coffee company going on, and there's your uh, your academy. Talk, tell me everything. Well, I don't know where to start, man. Uh, everything's <laughs> yeah, just keeping me busy, man. Keeping me on the grind, keep me on my toes all the time, and uh, just enjoying life, man. Just trying to make the most of everything, and. Yeah, you know, just keep moving onward and upward every day. Where where was this uh, company, uh, this coffee company idea came from? How 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 did that start? It's going pretty well. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna buy some here and, and use it on my podcast to get me jamming here. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be awesome, man. Grab some. Uh, it's the best coffee you ever had. So that, and that's kind of how it started. My, I had a, a guy that owned a co coffee company, and he was sponsoring me and. I would call him and I was and just talk to him about coffee. He he knew everything about coffee, and I said, "Man, this is the best coffee I've ever had in my life. Like, nice. how how do you make it so good?" And and he was having some issues with his company with uh, some trademark issues and licensing and you know just kind of silly stuff like that. But the business was going good, and he just brought it up to me one day. Uh, you know, maybe instead of fighting about trademark stuff, maybe we'll just. Uh, just change uh, it all completely trend. yeah and you know he's he got really interested in uh mma um i don't know if i just lost you there I had a... yeah there you go it's probably someone calling you right it happens yeah. all the time don't worry yeah and um yeah and we we just went from there man we just took it and ran with it from there so uh, it's been going good ever since. That's awesome. And I was telling you, like, uh, I, I always thought you were like in New Mexico somehow. You you from Ohio? This uh, that that's where your school is. Talk, tell us about a little bit of your uh, your academy. Uh, it's a it's a martial arts academy, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, not a lot to say about it really. I mean, it's a a gym, and we just try to keep it, um, you know. I don't know. I mean, we, you know, we just. We try to keep the. Um, the I, I mean, it's more like focusing on uh, like just re regular students, or, or are you thinking? Because I saw you you were cornering like a uh, Mickey Gall the other day, and yeah. it, it's that a line you you try to uh, to get to like a coaching kind of thing? Because this is you're probably gonna be like one of the greatest coaches ever when when you when you retire because you got you have like a lot of experience and uh, and 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 and. That not only comes with time, but I think we can see in your style. Like he, you are much calmer, still super aggressive, but a much calmer fighter now. And and I think he, when I saw you with Mick Gall, I was like, this is this is this is genius because not everybody likes to make that that switch, right? And uh, and not everybody can because teaching it's 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 yeah. kind of it's that doesn't mean you, you being a great fighter doesn't mean you're going to be a great teacher and and absolutely. you being a great teacher doesn't mean you're going to be a great fighter right absolutely and yeah so going back to the gym um i try to bring the the high level um accomplishments that i've had and that experience and knowledge and and just, I think the whole purpose of it is that, uh, um, uh, you know, to inspire others yeah. that they can do uh, what I've done. Like, I'm not anybody special, even though I, I, I guess I probably am in some respects, but um, which I've come to find from owning a gym and coaching. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. But um, that's kind of the idea, right? So that's. And that's how I want to do it with uh, coaching. You know, I, um, I've coached a little bit, not a lot, but I've coached a few guys. I've been pretty, uh, fairly selective with who I've coached. Mickey's a, a great guy and has been around with good friends. And um, I like coaching those kind of people that, um, you know, work with me and, and not just me telling them, go do this. Yeah. Uh, I try to be more of a player coach, right? So I get in and, um, you know, do the grind right there with them, right along their side, man. 
And that, and that, that brings a different motivation to the guy too, right? Like, hey, mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm telling you what to do. I know how to do it. That That's really important too, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of things I'll, I'll tell them like, I can't really do this that well, but this is probably what you should do. Um, and I try to, so back to the gym, it's, it's sort of the same thing with the students. Like I try to um, explain to them how to do things and uh, be right there on the mats with them doing them the same time that they're doing them. Whether it's a first day person um, that's in just because they're a fan or if it's a, uh, a experienced person that's competing or has been doing it for a long time. Um, you know, I just try to be in there. I, I just love being on the mats, man. So having my own place where I can um, bring that energy and bring that uh, inspiration to others is a beautiful thing. And the kids is my favorite part of the whole thing. That's awesome. Watching them, watching them come in. Um, I don't know how many stories I could tell of kids that I see day one. They come in and they're their heads are down or they're scared or they're nervous or they're uh, anxious, um, maybe got bullied at school, different things like this. Uh, a month or two later, their chests are puffed out. They're walking around like they're the king of the world and uh, proud to be a part of what we're doing. And yeah, that's awesome. And that's the most inspiring thing, man. That's awesome. We, we say that a lot with the, with the jiu-jitsu thing because it's a uh, – it, 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 you just put a little seed in their minds like, hey uh, – he, he, the, the guy that's making fun of you in school, he's still going to do it, but it's your choice now not to choke him out or, or punch him in the face. Now it's just funny, right? It's like, look, it's, now it's, uh, I can fuck him up if I want to. I, mm -hmm. I had a little, I have a nine-year-old daughter and, and uh, uh, probably people from the podcast are going to say, oh shit, he's going to tell this story again, but you don't know. So uh, mm -hmm. she, she had a kid that was, uh, it was a special need kid that was in uh in, in her after school class right so they had like a two or three teachers and one day like on a tuesday we got a note say hey, uh this kid uh kind of like uh, he was walking by and he kicked her right on in her back and my we got the note i told my wife i say look don't get involved it's, it's fucking kids being kids you gotta let them be kids too it's 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 gonna happen that she probably say something he didn't like that's how he He's going to let her know he didn't like what she said, and it's never going to happen again. And then a couple of days later, he slapped her. And then I was like, all right, now we have a problem. So, And she did some jujitsu now with this whole shit that's that's going all over. We, we stopped that, but we're coming back. But uh, she did jujitsu at the time, and then I sat down with her, and I said, like, <laughs> like a grave dad. I was like, look, uh, if that kid come back come close to you again, you're going to look him in the eye, and you're going to tell like, back off. And if he doesn't, you're going to take him down. You, you know how to do that from class, right? She was like, yeah. I said, yeah. So you're going to take him down. You're not going to choke him out, but you're going to take him down. You're going to mount, and then you're going to wait for the teacher to come. Don't let him move. And I saw in her eyes, like it was, it was awesome because I saw it was the first time she clicked that, oh, shit, okay. So, like, whatever I do in school, in the mats, I can do out of that, too. Like, I can, I can use that against – Against this boy who's who who might come at me again, and then and then she kind of like she was looking at me like I could see she she got the message, and uh, it, nothing ever happened after that. But she she was okay. She because she didn't want to go back to the. She was like, hey, uh, we kind of like she's super like uh, super like happy all the time and excited to go to school. And then she was like, hey, can you pick me up? I don't want to stay after school anymore and stuff like that. We're kind of like, oh, we have a problem. And after that, she was like, no, she was fine. And I asked a few days later, say, any any problems with the guy? Because I just want to tell her, say, look, you punch me in the fucking face. And my wife goes like, no, that's not how it works. So I was like, so I'm going to go there. I'm going to punch me in the face. She's like, no, 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 don't get involved. We get involved, right? It's our daughters. It's our, it's our kids. But yeah. it never happened, and that comes from martial arts, right? It's awesome. It's exactly what you're saying. Yeah, that's uh, very stand-up-ish of you because I would have told him punch him in the fucking face and be done with it. Right? Yeah, yeah right? Like, it was funny you say that story. My kids have a, a similar story. They they were bullied. One of my kids was bullied one time. that um, They were only in third grade at the time. And uh, 
the kid was just pushing him at the as a flag football game, and I was sitting in the car so I could see the kid kind of messing with him. And the, it's similar where the kid was maybe autistic or had a little something yeah. on, you know, maybe on the spectrum or something. And um, I seen my kid, my son, just talk to him and told him something. And then the kid walked away and he come in the car a little bit later. I said, <laughs> what'd you tell him? He said, he said, well, I just told him if uh, if you do that again, I'm going to take you down and put you on your back. I'm going to mount you. And then if you keep fighting, I'm going to break your arm. That's fucking and, awesome. And, and the kid was like, the kid had no idea, you know, like what to even say or anything. So the kid just walked away. Was you like, the kid yeah, I don't want shit. my fucking arm broke. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's exactly yeah. it. And uh, I, I had a story too with uh, Leonardo Leonardo Vieira, the Czech master. Yeah, yeah. yeah Lel, Lelzinho. And he was telling like his kid was, uh, was getting bullied in school. And That there was something going on, and, and the kid just prevented something from happening, right? And then they called him in school, and uh, and he said, "Look, my kid knows how to defend himself, and so if something's gonna happen, you're gonna have to talk to their parents. I'm okay. You, whatever happens, my my kid knows how to defend." And they was like, "Oh, he's not supposed to. He's like, he's not supposed to have to defend himself. Fuck yeah, he's supposed to defend yeah, himself. It's crazy. It's crazy." But it, it, it brings that little extra, right? Like your kids, like, hey, uh, you're gonna do this. You're, gonna, you're just gonna fucking regret. Don't don't do it. Wrong wrong guy, wrong kid to mess around with. Yeah, yeah. And I was lucky it was that kid because my other one probably would have just elbowed him in his face. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh... yeah. That's a beautiful thing with the, with the kids, man. Like it gives them that confidence, and uh, I talk a lot about that with uh, the kids, like. I'm not as much about anti-bullying as I am. Uh, I like to be more proactive. Like yeah. anti-bullying means someone's bullying you, and then you have to do something back. So, um, what I promote more is you're gonna walk around proud with your with your head up, and no one's gonna want to mess with you. Yes, It's, you're gonna be proactive about it, and you're gonna be confident and strong and The kids just not gonna. They're gonna see you're not the guy to mess with. That's it. And, That, it's a different time too, right? Because like our times, like we 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 the same age. Uh, when our high school time, that was always bully, and it was cool. Like oh, yeah. you get bullied, you bully back. But today it's a fucking like oh don't don't say this, don't say that. So and and, and if you go past the bullying part, that's when we fight. <laughs> But nowadays mm -hmm. it's just there's like all this social media and uh and the keyboard war warriors at school too right because they, mm -hmm. they're not gonna do shit in school and then they come back and uh they go on facebook messenger or, or yeah. whatever those kids because it's happening or like our kids on facebook messenger with friends and then you see like hey this girl because my daughter goes like hey she doesn't get involved but she's like hey today that we have a little group and this girl was talking shit to that girl I was like all right so you out of you out of the group because i don't want you to be part of that i don't want you doing to anyone and i don't want anyone to do it with you because I, i i'm not going to control myself it's like i that that's not how i work <laughs> so yeah, i'm just, yeah. just gonna tell her say no you're a good day fucking beat her up and and my and then my wife is mad She's like don't tell her to do that i was like shit <laughs> no fights a, a part of a childhood right it's yeah a, a standard normal part man and you know you got you get there's got to be a hierarchy right yeah so be, yeah like, at some point yeah that that that's that's our time right like that it was like yeah. that you you know there was a kid you you go fuck around with there's a kid you don't <laughs> and you gotta yeah, know yeah. that too <laughs> i mean i think we, most of us went through something and like i got bullied a decent amount and uh you know i would fight back every time yeah That and I it. got my ass kicked sometimes for it. more times than not. When I was a kid, I got my ass kicked because I was getting bullied by the bigger kids. But uh, I learned uh, or, you know, they learned that if they're going to bully me, there's going to be a fight, even if they win. Yes. Yes. That's it. That's it. And they didn't like that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't like you, but it was I, I was I was knowing uh, uh, early just before my, my high school. 
Because my, my first fight, it was with a kid with a broken arm. He, he had a fucking... <laughs> but he wanted to fight so bad. Like, he was pushing me. He was trying to punch me with the with the cast in his arm and shit. And I went there and fucking kind of, like, kick his ass. And then people were like, oh, you were that guy who beat the guy with a broken arm? So that's kind of what... <laughs> what <laughs> I was like, all right, so I'm sorry. Not a, not a good, uh, not yeah, a good I- merit <laughs> to be known by. <laughs> Look, oh, uh, how how did you get and and that's some of that stuff stuff we're gonna talk about. You probably said a million times, but I just want people from Brazil that uh, t- to know how, how how did you start in 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 martial arts and and fighting? Yeah. How that journey until you get to the UFC? Well, I literally just went and signed up one day. I had never trained or anything, and I just went there. Was, it was back in the days when there wasn't commissions and wasn't sanctioned or nothing and i just signed up um that that's really that was the start and then i won the first couple of times so i thought i was a real tough guy did you did and you then, th- what what were you training before uh when you... no nothing no <laughs> no no it was nothing i didn't train at all and then and then um <clears throat> excuse me um like I said, I won a couple of times, so I thought I was a tough guy. I was like, dude, this is uh, this is easy, you know? And then finally I did get my ass kicked, and I decided, you know, like a really technical guy. Like a guy, he beat me with technique and mm-hmm. power, everything. Just beat the living hell out of me, so I decided. That, that type of wake-up car, he says, shit, I'm never yeah. going to beat this guy, right? Like, yeah. That's how I felt at the time, yeah. I'd beat him now, though. But, <laughs> for sure. but the uh, it, it got me to go to a gym, you know. So I finally went to a gym, and then I really got my ass kicked when I went to the gym because now I'm getting beat up in jujitsu. I'm getting beat up in wrestling. I'm getting beat up in Muay Thai and, and boxing. And um, but I was fortunate that the first gym I went to was really good pros, and they were very helpful. And I seen that they were, they were actually like right on the cusp of getting in the UFC and nice. uh, they never did make it, but they were right there. Um, they probably should have made it. And yeah, that, so that just kind of inspired me and it got me to um, stop drinking, stop partying, stop doing all uh, the drugs and stuff and um, got me uh, driven to do something productive with my life and I'm, I remember that, you know, the the first day I went in there, I said, this is what I want to do and I'm going to pursue this um, or I'm going to die trying. This is what I want to do with my life. Nice. That that That's very nice. Uh, that, there's one. Uh, uh, it's not a cool fact, but it's a, a, a curiosity. I, I moved to the United States in 2004 in a few months back, it was that uh, concert where the the former guitar player from Pantera got shot. You were that con- you were at that concert, right? Yes. That that's great. I was I was reading that and I and and, and I just saw a fact because I, I remember so clearly that and and that's uh pe- people kind of know you be- because of the, the 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 it's not heavy metal. It's like a it's heavy metal. Yeah. It's heavy metal for us. It's all, it was always heavy. Now there's like all different names, but uh, group metal. That, right. That's from yeah. that's from like your, your teen years. You always like that type of songs and uh, concerts and that kind. Because of, I can see like like you were saying now, like you, you would just go and sign up for a fight, uh, and that's kind of how you are. Like right, like get into fights and parties and, and and rock. When you say like the parties and and, and fights and stuff. Uh, it just brings me the, the the rock concerts, the old style, the the old the old fashioned uh, way to go to rock concerts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used to love it, man, when I was a kid. I, now I'm the guy sitting back in the corner and chilling and actually watching the show and enjoying it. But yeah, the Pantera was actually my first concert um, on the Reinventing the Steel tour. Uh, it was Soulfly, Morbid Angel, and Pantera. Pantera headlined, and it was their last tour. Nice. Uh, that they ever did and and then of course i went to uh the dime bag show with damage plan and just one of the craziest like uh, you know days of my life and um yeah but i've always been in that shit man nice look we're gonna do uh we're gonna do a fight to fight uh that i kind of explain to you a little bit i'm gonna i'm gonna get a we, we, we're not gonna do all of it because we're gonna be here all night 
but uh, I'll do a good selection of fights, and you tell me something that that comes to your mind about about that one specific fight. Okay, yes, we're gonna boy, do I some wins it. and we're gonna do some losses too, because I think your 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 career it's it's just not about winning and losing. You, you, you're always there, super high level, just like your your last fight with uh, Diego Lima. He was he was freaking something beautiful to see. So. Uh, and a big fan of Carlos Conde too, but you won that fight, I think. <laughs> yeah, but, but it happens, right? Yeah. So, uh, Ultimate Fighter finale. That's when you win the 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 Ultimate Fighter, right? Like Matt Arroyo. Mm -hmm. What what comes in your mind on on, on that fight? Um, the first thing that pops in my head when I think about that fight is he's a grappler. Obviously, um, I fought him before on 24 hours notice was the first time that I fought him. Um, to be fair, he had to make weight and I didn't. So that was because I fought on 24 hours notice. I, uh -huh. I took the fight at the weigh-ins and he was already on weight. His opponent pulled out, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I know he's a grappler. So all I you know, basically just trained a lot of takedown defense and, and jujitsu. And then within the first, I don't know, 30 seconds of fight, he come out and hit me with one of the hardest right hands I've ever been hit with because I was just completely not thinking about it. or pay. I expected him to just come out and shoot right away um, like he did in the first fight. And he cracked the shit out of me. And that's <laughs> <laughs> the big black eye. And, um, it rocked me really good, actually. So uh, he had his chance right there and didn't take it. He went for the takedown right after that. Um, and, and that's, and so after that, it's like, is, is, is it like a thing like the, the dream come true kind of thing? It's like, I'm in, I'm in the UFC. That was, uh, I, I can only imagine that's always the goal, right? Because it, it, you want to be at the highest level, right? That, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, to be honest, I don't remember much after that. Um, I mean, obviously it felt good and everything, but, um. I don't know. I mean, I kind of, if you see most of my wins, like I don't get too overly excited about it. You know, like I do a whole training camp and everything and I, I plan on winning. Yeah. You know, so, so I don't, I don't know why to get so excited. Like that's what I came there to do. That's what, what the, that's what the plan was. Um, I didn't have any expectation of anything different. That's awesome. Uh, then, then let's, uh, we're going to do, The uh, UFC 105, Jesus Christ, that's 2009 in England. Uh, you won against uh, James uh, Wilkins. Yeah, um, man. The first thing I think about when uh, think about that fight was the jet lag. You know, I flew over, you know, four days early like we normally do. Cut the weight, came off real good, and everything. And I remember it didn't really kick in until fight day. I uh, felt good all week. And then fight day, the jet lag kicked in hardcore. Um, I remember not sleeping all night um, and just feeling like complete garbage. And I remember walking out to the fight, my legs shaking under me, underneath me, um, just scared out of my mind. You know, I just flew over here and, Uh, uh, across the world and I'm about to get my ass kicked because I'm fucking jet lagged and Holy I can't shit. barely lift my legs up and then put on a, I think I put on a pretty good performance you know I think I, uh, I I guess I just woke up and and things started clicking man so that's crazy how how yeah. is the uh, it's like I mean over there you're just starting right so but now how is the your mind going into a fight like because you 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 can never avoid to 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 think like that right like i have a bunch of friends fighters and stuff like that and, and we always like talk like very carefully and say look uh, what about like this is a shitty fight for you kind of but you don't want to say that because uh, the, the the mind plays so much tricks on you right how do you like now overcome all of that it's it's a lot easier i can only imagine right like it's it's just another fucking day kind of thing i don't like to think of it as just another day i know a lot, a lot of people kind of get into that they're like ah, it's just like sparring and you know what it's not like sparring like the dude's trying to take your fucking head off you know like yeah. he's trying to kill you he's willing to die out there nobody's 
for the most part, nobody's willing to die in sparring, right? They, that's um, right. That's true. And, you know, and it's the most, it's the, the most important day. So I don't like to think of it like that. It is a bigger thing. It is more important because I have kind of went in with that mentality before and I was overly relaxed. It's like, that's just sparring, you know, and then I'm kind of chilled and, and he's over here trying to fucking kill me. And I'm like, why are you doing that? I thought we were just sparring, right? <laughs> um, so, of course, we have negative thoughts consistently, but I think the way that we overcome that is through habit. Um, so that has to start months before the fight. And that's when negative thoughts come into your head. Uh, you have to figure out a system, which is a pretty – the way I do it is pretty simple but not easy. And I literally just sometimes say to myself either out loud or in my head I just say stop. I mean, it's like I said, it's really simple. You just say stop and then and then change it to a uh, positive thought. Okay. And, and again, it's pretty simple, but um, it's not easy, you know. And then, and then I also write down positive affirmations before the fight that I, again, I, I continually practice uh, before the competition so that they're so ingrained in my head that <clears throat> the night of the fight, I don't have to like read them anymore. They're just already in my head. So I just say them over and over. And, and then I'll also <clears throat> list out specific reasons why I deserve to win or how I've earned the win. Um, you know, remind yourself usually like the week of the fight, like you write it down, um, what you have done up to this point, how hard you've trained, right? So you just write those things down and then it becomes, um, even deeper into your mind. Yeah. That, that's, that's cool because like all, all of you guys, like, uh, uh, you guys are, are really good at, at like uh, analyzing fights and 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 checking fights. That's what you do, right? That's your that's your profession. That's a, you're a, you're a, a professional, literally a professional at that. And and there's some some fights there, or he, especially like way back, right? Not I'm not gonna say now, but you 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 watching that guy that you're gonna fight it's like oh shit uh, I, i'm in for a fucking beating here right because it's like hey the, either this guy and, and that's the part where i want to try to understand like how do you get the shit out of your mind right it's like because at, at some point you're looking at a guy if I, you say shit this guy is better than me well that's uh that's easy to do and that's where um you have to be very um disassociated and i've made this mistake many times in the past I, i would actually exactly what you're talking about i would attribute the majority of my losses to that exact mentality and that's uh focusing on my opponent and look at him, looking at his name or what he's accomplished and uh things like that and letting that get into your head and then what i at least make an effort to do whether i accomplish it or not now i i don't look at their their name I look at them as a human with two arms, two legs, yeah. and and they bleed the same as me. And look at it almost like a robot. Like, okay, what does this robot do that I need to deconstruct what he does? Um, you know, that I don't need to have a, a name to him. Um, I, I don't need to think about uh, his accomplishments or anything like that. I just think if it's a human being that accomplishes uh, or, or just performs these specific actions – deconstruct that and from there forget about it That's so you do that at the beginning of camp and then you forget about it and again it's all about writing it down having a, a plan and strategy so write down okay this is what he does um so now he's just a, a few blips on a piece of paper and ju just and, like and a then, guy with a bad wrestling or or, or a bad left hook yes. or something like that that you can explore right? yes. that's awesome Yes. Yeah, so, awesome. so now it's written down on a piece of paper. So now in training, you can say, okay, now how do I beat this, uh, you know, on a piece of paper, uh -huh. you know, this, how do I beat this piece of paper rather than how do I beat that person? Yeah. And then, and then from there, you know, you, you just implement that into the drilling and, and then it becomes really about you and not about him. Yeah. And, and that's the, the biggest thing that, uh, I, I think has changed for me and made me a better fighter is uh, the focus on myself rather than on who's standing across the cage from me. 
if, even uh, <laughs> if you lose, it's better, right? Because you're like, shit, what did I do wrong? Exactly. That I let that happen, right? Exactly. It's yeah. it's all about yourself. It's a it's a it's a thousand percent um, what's in your control, which is what you do. That's awesome. That's awesome, and I love that. Uh, then uh, then you fought you you fought uh, Ricardo Almeida. Uh, you 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 remember that? I, I'm just gonna say Ricardo Almeida because. I I know him. My trainer Hansel's here, and uh, and I I know Ricardo for for a long time, and I and and I, it just comes to my like oh, shit. Ricardo made, and that reminds us how long it's been in the game too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that that's a uh, 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 that's a good one because that that was specifically a fight. What we were just talking about, where I was so involved with like who he was. And what he had accomplished, you know, I, I lost him back in pride and Pancrase and, you know, these, you know, I looked up to him. So, or Abu Dhabi, I mean, I don't, I don't Abu know Dhabi, if you yeah. know, Abu Dhabi, you know, and I, I looked up to him so much and then standing across the cage from him, I couldn't believe I was standing across from Ricardo Almeida. Shit. And, and that really, uh, to be honest, I didn't even realize it at the time, how much of a problem that was. So I hadn't. And done that self exploration until later and realized how big of a problem that was and um, so that that's uh, that's sort of the biggest thing I remember from that fight just looking across like like damn this is you know a real legend right here this is a true pioneer icon of the sport and in my head I didn't feel um, significant enough to be in there with them and that there's and there's there's different. Uh sense of uh because like i i remember talking to uh renato moicano and uh and he was telling me about when he fought aldo he say shit i looked across the kid and that was fucking jose aldo especially for that that guy he grew up from brazil watching the guy right and but that it's for, with ricardo almeida he, he's not the the 10 year uh unbeaten champ or anything it's just that like that that martial artist Kind of like yeah. shit. It's Ricardo fucking Almeida, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I get exactly what you say. Because because people are gonna say like, shot, come on, he was never like that good of a striker. And no, it's fucking Ricardo Almeida, like a ADCC champ and fought pride. You just respect the guy for his legacy, kind of thing, right? Yeah, for sure. And there's a little bit of other backstory um, behind that fight too that maybe affected me a little bit, but we don't really need to worry about that. But uh, Like I'd trained with him before and different things, so I kind of knew. Oh, how really? Good he was. Okay. Yeah, I kind of knew how good he was, and again, I let that shit get into me uh, on the inside. And um, again, years later, learning all this, now I can look back and say, okay, that was certainly a problem. And um, but it's not a matter of whether it was a problem; it's a matter of whether you fix the problem. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then. Uh... We have the fight with uh, John Howard in uh, mm -hmm. it, it was UFC Congo versus Barry in June 2011. Yeah, you, you yeah. remember your fights really well, like all of them, or, or is there, there, there's um, something that gets a little more foggy because it's 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 been a while. No, I remember them pretty well, to be honest. There's that's yeah, it. that's is that's why this is a cool little little piece you got going here because there is little things i remember about each one but not oh, all awesome. of them really, exactly really well. exactly yeah i don't want yeah. to recap of the fight it's just like what do you <laughs> remember from that fight really like you could say look i remember uh he was all sweaty and stinky and i didn't want to get close to him <laughs> there's a bunch <laughs> yeah, of shit yeah. like whatever whatever comes to your mind um a couple of things with that one so i was supposed to he was a, a replacement about five, six weeks out, I think, you know, he still had a full training camp and everything, but my original fight was way easier than him is what I remember. I can't remember who it was, but mm. when they told me, yeah, we're placing with John Howard, I was like, holy shit. Like <laughs> this guy's fucking way tougher than, uh, or John Howard's way tougher than the guy <laughs> I was supposed to fight. Right? I, I got oh, right? to yeah, kick it to another gear or something. Right. And, uh, You know, I was, so I was pretty excited for that fight. And uh, the one thing I remember mostly about that fight is that dude was one of the strongest guys I've ever felt in the octagon. Um, hit so fucking hard. It was, it was, I remember blocking some shots with my forearms and, 
and feeling it um, go through. And I was like, damn, this guy, I, I got to really watch out. But I probably felt more in the zone in that fight than I had in any previous UFC fight. I really got in my zone in that fight, and I think it, it showed in my performance. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, he's still going. He's on, I think he's, he's fighting for a PFL. I, uh, yeah. I, I watched him uh, a, a, either a few months back, and now oh, it was the last season. I, but but I remember, I, he's from Boston, too, I think. Yep, he is. Uh, then we go uh, Chris Cope on UFC 143 in February 2012. Yeah, so that guy, uh, he was kind of an annoying guy, right? Like, he was <laughs> always doing the woos, and um, I remember... Like I hit him one time and he did the woo and I was, I just remember like, dude, I'm going to fuck you up. For <laughs> like, like, you are not doing that shit to me, man. And I'm going to show you the next, fucking woo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then the, the next time I hit him, uh, it, it cracked him pretty good and, and finished him. So <laughs> yeah. let me know how that worked out for you. <laughs> yeah. Like that shit was so annoying, man. So what do you mean woo? Like you you were punching, he was like woo kind of thing like that? Yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> he he did like the the wrestler. The, what was the wrestler? Ric Flair or something that used to do that stuff? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know wrestling that okay. well. But, <laughs> but it was, he was copying one of the WWF guys. <laughs> oh, so shit. Then we go with uh, Stephen Thompson on UFC mm -hmm. 145. Yeah, um, the first thing that comes to mind of that fight was all the, the build-up to the fight first because he was obviously, um, you know, just so hyped up. and This uh, Lioto Machida twin brother yeah. lost somewhere in time, right? <laughs> yeah, and, you know, he just destroyed everybody he fought before that. Um, There's a little backstory, too. So his um, his academy that his dad owns – in the Car one of the Carolinas, North Carolina, uh -huh. was right down the street from my cousin's academy. So they had like a 15, 20-year kind of small little war going on between oh, each wow. other. Right? Yeah. And so that made it you know, even a little bit more personal. And so the buildup, though, I got – man, I had his fans – sending me tweets all the time these direct messages like he's you have your cousin on the corner just waving at them it's like hey what's up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be right, pretty right. dope right <laughs> yeah i mean these guys were ruthless man they were talking shit um about my family they were talking shit oh, to me and like then, the the people and, from from the school and uh i, I don't know if like the, the, the fans or, the fans right yeah just these fans that were oh, fans wow. of him they're like he's gonna fuck you up But I knew all along, and I said it to him uh, long before the fight. I said, Muay Thai is going to beat karate nine out of ten times. Like, you're going to have to – you're going to have a, a hard road here because I'm good at Muay Thai and you're good at karate. And, um, you know, those elbows are going to get through eventually, and they did. Um, but anyway, so we had the fight and everything, and, you know, I beat the shit out of him. A really tough fight, really, really hard fight. Um, you know, he was better than I even expected. Uh, made a really, really hard fight. Um, but then afterward, I, you know, I talked to him a little bit. I thought everything was cool, but we ended up both going to the hospital together because he actually um, about halfway knocked me out during the fight. I was kind of out on my feet. I remember seeing stars and um, and kind of losing consciousness for a second while on my feet. And then I woke oh, up and, and I'm still fighting. And, and I just threw a punch like, okay, well, I'm still here. I got to throw something, you know, oh, and I think shit. it just complete, completely winged and missed, you know, <laughs> but I was like, I just got to <laughs> throw something just in case he's around. Right. And, um, so anyway, so we both had to go to the hospital after and we're both. So like I said, we were talking a little bit and I go, Hey, you guys, we only have one ambulance here. Does one of you want to wait or do you guys both want to just go in the ambulance <laughs> together? So we went in the ambulance together. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. No problem. But then on the way to the fucking hospital, his dad starts talking about a rematch. Like in the, in the, the ambulance. ambulance. <laughs> yeah. And, and 
and I just told his dad, I was like, look, I was like, we can fucking finish it right here. <laughs> like, like, you know, I was like, I was like, you want to, you want to talk about a rematch? Like we can rematch right now, buddy. <laughs> and uh he kind of quieted down after that yeah no shit right <laughs> <laughs> this is so awesome this is like, you're like that no nonsense guy at all it's like a rematch well we fucking here now let's just do it <laughs> yeah like we're both in, we're, we're in a closed space like let's go no one's gonna break us up in the ambulance <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome All right, then uh, we have uh, Luis Ramos in uh, June 2012. Mm. That was pretty quick turnaround too, right? Mm, yeah, it I was guess. like two yeah. months from the Stephen Thompson fight. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love fighting, man. Um, you know what I remember about uh, Ramos was um, he blew me away with how strong he was. Another guy that was just... You know, back then that was before USADA, you know, and <laughs> yeah, that's a that's an important note. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure he had a little bit of help because that dude grabbed me and I was like, "What the fuck? Like, like how are you this strong at this weight, buddy?" And uh, but he 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 was clearly one of those guys that uh, used that uh, strength and um, to his advantage, which doesn't last into the second and third round. Yes. Yes, uh, but yeah, there wasn't wasn't a whole. That's probably one of my less memorable fights uh, in terms of what I remember in my mind. Uh then we have a win against, uh, and then you stop me because I'm gonna I'm gonna roll up to uh, Eric Silva. We have a win against uh, Mike Swick, I think, mm -hmm. in in December 2012. Uh, then we have Jordan Main. In uh, April 2013, Mike Pyle in uh, August. Oh, that's my birthday, August 17, 2013. Then you fought like a, a, a Brazilian sensation that they were trying to sell to us at least. Like, this guy is going to be the next Brazilian superstar, Eric Silva. Uh, I think he's pretty much retired now. I, I, he, was, he has a contract with Bellator, but I don't think this guy wants to fight anymore i don't uh, we kind of know but we don't talk about it like i don't know what happened yeah, to him yeah. but uh what, what do you remember like eric silva in uh it's your main event actually right like brown versus uh mike brown versus eric silva that's how yeah. hyped up that kid was too right mm -hmm. yeah and that was sort of the whoever won that fight was going to go on to a contender fight which is uh exactly what happened and Uh, yeah, he was very hyped up. It was funny. So I had watched Eric Silva long before he was in the UFC. I think I just randomly came across a YouTube highlight or something. And and I was like, damn, that's a bad motherfucker yeah. right there. <laughs> he, that back in the jungle fighting, you know, he was just smashing people. And like I said, he, all the hype was real, you know. And yeah. uh, that fight was in my, not my hometown, but uh, close to my hometown, So I had more family there than I had at my family reunion. And uh, it, it was just a packed house, all the, um, so I was just embracing the moment, man. There was, it was finally a main event for me. Everything I'd worked for in my whole life was finally yes. uh, coming there. And um, it just felt so good, man. I, I've always performed better and the, the higher, the more pressure on me, the, the higher the stakes, the better I perform. And, um, You get that you Sorry. get that feeling like I, I that I made it kind of feeling. You see your fucking like yeah. like I said, like it's your main event kind of thing. Like do you do you like the I made it, it's not in a cocky way. Is it's just like holy shit, like look back and, and say, I'm fucking here. Like it's it's I'm the main event, kind of like do you do you kind of tap yourself in the back about that at all? No, no not at no. all. Not at all. Uh I've always believe that it should be bigger and better than what it is you know uh you know that fight up again i'm in my hometown close to my hometown um there's billboards everywhere for me that i'm seeing myself on the ufc oh, has me doing tons of media because you know he's brazilian so he's not doing as much media as yes me. they got me going to all the tv stations they got me visiting with the the bingles they got me doing this and that <laughs> you know my schedule is crazy I never once, it never crossed my mind that I made it. I thought this is the beginning of more. 
this That's isn't awesome. big enough yet. I should be sold out at Madison Square Garden right now. I should be doing media for that. Um, should be Dallas Cowboys Stadium. That's what it should be. Yeah, that's where that's I should awesome. be. Um, and that's uh, yeah, just my mind. If it was, if it was at Dallas Cowboys Stadium, I would have said this should be a soccer stadium with like a Wembley Stadium kind of like yeah. But yeah, it should, should be two hundred thousand people. It should yeah. be three hundred thousand, and um, that's just the way my mind works. It's never big enough. It's never good enough. Um, and so that one yeah i never had that feeling at all man and uh, i just felt like that's where i belonged I, um for that fight man i had the best training camp i ever had uh, everything just from beginning to end um just worked out perfectly all the way until about two weeks before the fight i threw my back out pretty bad oh and, shit. and i tell you what it worked out perfect though because my weight was already on point um I was feeling great, and normally I would have probably, with all the energy, I probably would have kept grinding those last two weeks and might have overtrained myself. The back oh, injury slowed me down. Okay. I healed it up in the last two weeks, just rested it, and it, it taught me a lesson, you know, that I could take those last two to three weeks off. When you have, I mean, it was a you know, fifteen, sixteen week camp, you know, yeah. you know, I was, you know, so I'd been grinding for a long time. Um, but that, and that was the only injury I had the whole time. And, um, that showed me like, you know, once you're in that good of shape, man, it's not going to fall off that quick. So it was a blessing in disguise. So I went into the fight fresh. Uh, my back was healed up. I felt great. Um, uh, I was so excited just to get in there and fight. And, uh, I was just feeling, uh, the energy, man. I was feeling the energy from the crowd and I knew that that was my night. I knew that everything Uh, had come into place and and there was nothing that was going to stop me that's awesome that's awesome and then you got you that that was actually your third bonus right i skipped right through the 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 first two ones against uh jordan main which was fight of the night then the mike pio fight he was knockout of the night and then eric silva was performance of the night and and fight of the night yeah yeah well, like a double bonus that feels good yeah it was a good good little time man and You know, we're still going. So, so then you go to the Robbie Lawler fight, which was like a, a title eliminator, right? Kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, what what was going on there? I, I I'm I'm reading here. I I don't remember that uh, that you didn't make the weight, uh, but it it was a fucking fight of the night. So, how, yeah. So the the weight was uh, that's a kind of an interesting story, I guess. So. I was I was going around and I had a, a little bit of stress, maybe would have made a little bit of problems. Like my this one coach that I had back then was just a fucking aggravation, and just a one of the, you know just being a problem the whole week. Well, anyway, it, it didn't matter. Um, I was like, oh I think I have shit! Found. I think I remember that. That was like a uh, it was with you. Like there was like some kind of commotion. Uh, Or, 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 or like Hyatt. a fighting or something on fight week or something. That, that's what you're talking about? Yeah, it was the same coach. When uh, when I fought Damian Maya later, um, he punched me after the oh, fight. Oh, so and, that's what – okay, okay. Yeah, oh. so this was the same coach, right? So he was causing all these problems. Uh, and I think it might have had little something to do with like the stress levels that I was dealing with um, coming into the weight cut. But it's no excuse anyway. Um, I actually just ran out of time for cutting weight. I called the UFC and I said, look, I just need like another 30 minutes. I, I think I was only a half pound over, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. um, I might have been a pound at most. Yeah, it's a 172 and a half. Okay, a pound and a half. Yeah. Um, and I just called him. I said, look, I, I just need like, you know, another 30, 45 minutes. And they, kept, they said, no, like the weigh-in is at this time. And if you don't make weight at that time, then you'll have an hour after that to make the weight. Uh, so I said, okay, well, you know, I guess I have to show up then, right? Like, so, you know, they just didn't let me uh, finish cutting the weight. And so get to the weigh in, weigh in and everything. And then in the back, um, I, right after I step off the scale, you know, I'm getting ready to go cut the weight. I'm like, uh -huh. I, I got an extra pound. I, I thought it was a half pound, but uh, maybe that's correct. Um, I said, okay, I got to go run this off real quick. Well, anyway, uh, some doctor comes over and he goes, He goes, no, you can't cut that weight. Like, like I, I see the way you look right now. Like, you, you know, you're, you're not cutting this weight. 
So I, I said, well, okay, well, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to give up 20, 20% of my purse either. Like yeah. I'll, I'll just go cut the fucking weight. He's like, there's no way you're cutting that weight. He said, you need water right now. So I went and uh, got some water and started drinking water. Well, Dana comes over about, I don't know, uh, five or 10 minutes later. And he goes, Hey, did, you know, did some guy tell you guys not to cut the weight? Cause someone else missed weight too. A uh, girl, I think. Oh, and, and, and they, she, and it's this guy had told her the same thing. And, and he, he goes, did somebody tell you guys not to cut the weight? And I was like, yeah, you know, some doctor, he goes, that guy's not a fucking doctor. He's not a fucking commissioner or nothing. Oh, we don't know who the fuck he is. Shit. Right. So anyway, we, what we got to talk fuck? with Dana and he's like, and he's like, look, he's like, he's like, you guys, uh, me and whoever else it was, he said, look, I, I know you guys, you guys have never missed weight before. If your opponents will, will keep the fight, we're not even going to worry about it. They didn't charge me my twenty percent, and and just yeah, uh, went went on about our way. So that was pretty interesting. Pretty <laughs> that funny is crazy. Point. Yeah. So this is just some fucking random guy just comes up and tells us not to come, <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out great for me because I really didn't want to cut the weight, you know. But yeah, it's uh, especially that last pound, right? It sucks. Yeah. yeah I, get, I hear. Yeah, it. but it, I would have got it done. Like uh, yeah. I've never missed weight in my life, and. And like I said, I just missed time that one. So, um, you know, it, it, it works out fine either way. Um, but then, you know, we finally get to the fight and, um, you know, what a great fight, man. Lawler's yeah, a fucking man. warrior. And this is the one thing I remember about this fight. Well, I learned a huge lesson in this fight about the levels in MMA. He's the first person in my life I ever fought where I punched him and I punched him hard and I rocked him and I hurt him. And he responded properly. He responded like a warrior. You know, he responded with either throwing back or being comfortable with being hurt like that. Holy you know, shit. he kept blocking. He kept his composure. He kept his eyes on me. He kept moving. And uh, I'd never fought anyone in my life before that where I hit him that hard and they continued fighting like a warrior. Wow. Yeah, everybody was... else I ever fought before. When I hit him that hard, It was close. It was the beginning of the end, yeah, uh, or or they would have just went down, and uh, that really threw me off. Just because I, I, you know, I, I hit him with some really good shots a couple of times, and uh, you know he was rocked. I mean, you could watch the fight. You can you can see clearly like he's rocked and he's hurt. And I was like, what the fuck? Like this dude is, is he's just going to stand here? Like he's, oh, he's just gonna, and that's what you're saying yeah. about levels, right? Like he, you reach that championship level. Yes. And it, it, it was so funny. You say that. because uh, uh, that, something that, that really, uh, it got stuck to me with, uh, I was doing a show with uh, Darren Till and he was like, look, I, I'm not fucking shitting on, on, on the guys that are out of the, the top 10 or anything like that. But like you're in that top 10 and that, then you go into that, that, that top five, it's a different fucking planet. <laughs> It is right. It's like it everybody's is, yeah. tough. Don't get me wrong. The fucking great fighters, and but you get into that top ten, top five. Say so it's a different level. You never see anything like that. Yeah, particularly when you with those guys like a Lawler or you know the or the champions, you know that are not only in the top ten but have been tested in the top ten. Yes, and, and, you know they they're they're solid uh, top ten regular top ten guys where. Uh, you know, they didn't just make an appearance and then fall off or something. But, uh, you know, the guys like that that have been through the grind have been former champions. And, you know, that yeah, it is um, it is totally a, a different level that is um, I personally wasn't prepared for it as I thought I would be. Yeah, it's 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 crazy, right? Like, it, it, I can only met look, I'm not a fighter. I, I never pretend to be one, but. I can only imagine, like like you're saying, like to, to hear a guy like you saying, it kind of fucking throws me off, because you, you you punching with something that you're so used to. It's like I, you know that punch, right? It's like I said, you, mm -hmm. you would knock out like nine out of ten guys, yeah. and the guy's still there looking at you, say, "Oh, all right, so what's next?" And say, "Holy shit!" <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, guys are inspiring with 16 ounce gloves on would would go down, or and then he's not only just standing there still, but he's still moving still aware still uh ready to keep fighting and yeah and, and ready for the next uh, uh series ready for the next exchange and, what yeah, what do you was, uh think of this uh fight with uh, nick diaz that's coming nah man 
That's, I mean, that's an exciting fight to watch. I think it's hard to say where either one of them are at, at this point in their career. So I think it's it's hard to make any predictions as to what will go on. But um, th- that's certainly exciting, man. Yeah, I put my, my, my prediction was uh, Lawler by decision kind of thing. Okay. Uh, I was like, hey, uh, Nick, it's a, it's, a, it's a warrior, right? Like, But he's five years out. It's... That, and he, and he's not like that guy that's grinding in the gym for five for all this five years that he's not fighting. He's not training like two times a day. <laughs> no, no. So so look, he he runs, he does his marathon thing. So he's in shape. He's always in great shape, but he's not fighting shape. So that that's why I give a I give it a lawler for now. Yeah, that's probably a good pick. Again, uh, I I just think with a with where they're at in their careers, which you talk about Nick Diaz, you know, only fighting once in five years and Lawler is certainly not as active as he was and certainly hasn't looked as good in his yeah. past performances as, as he did in the past. And it doesn't appear that he has the same uh, energy that he used to have where, where you'd hit him and he would just throw down. It seemed like the Condit fight was the last time that he really had that. And, uh, yeah, you know, right. if, he, if he can bring that fire, uh, to this fight, then I, I'm with you. He probably can uh, find a way to at least get a decision. Um, but maybe again, you know, maybe that five years was good for Nick too. I mean, he could that too. Yeah, it's it, and that's what's beautiful about the the, the MMA game, right? Like he, he, yeah. he, if you knew what was going to happen, it was not going to be fun. So that that <laughs> for sure, right? Then you go into a uh, Johnny Hendricks fight, and then like we're talking top of the top of the top for 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 like two two straight fights right because uh you fought johnny hendrix right after he fought uh rob lawler for the for the for the rematch and he was in a different level too i had a uh, george st pierre here he said he swear to god he was on something he said okay, that guy could never stop and he, and and he was crazy and then like right off i think right after that that's when uh Uzada came in right uh, you- yeah that that was actually if I, I might, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that was the last card before USADA was implemented. And, yes. And it was very clear when I fought Johnny. Um, I've said it a million times. He was on juice. There's n- no possible way he wasn't. And um, I know people within his camp at the time that, um, you know, uh, confirmed that he was on some shit. Yeah, and I, I think with on his case, it was kind of a, clear because his performance went down so much it's like it's a yeah. different guy like a different fighter right like a different he yeah. went from like a, a like a great fighter to like a like a top 30 fighter he he, he would never that make it like a top 10 uh it, it's it, it was he was a crazy crazy difference to, uh to see yeah and it was a, a boring fight i mean he he was able to out wrestle me and hold me down but uh, I honestly, I hurt him worse in the fight than her, he hurt me. It just wasn't a, you know, he, he got fucking out wrestled. You know, good yeah. for him, but um, you know, uh, muscles and strength go a long way in wrestling. That's true. That's true. Uh, then you go uh, a win against Team Means in uh, July 2015. Yeah, that was a, an awesome fight, man. Um, I, I think Tim is awesome. Man, he, he was never cool to me uh, before the fight or after the fight, but I, I think he's fucking awesome, man. And, um, you know, and I, I actually have a lot of respect for him. Um, and I didn't really respect him much before the fight, but after I fought him, I thought, man, uh, that's another guy that's really at that level where, you know, I hit him a few times and, and was like, holy shit, man. Like, his dude is a fucking killer. But I, I said I've been through the the Lawler fight and kind of learned that lesson, you know. And Tim is at that level, um, and he was the first guy I remember really in any fight uh, up to that point where he came right after me and didn't give Shit. a fuck. I mean, he came right after me and started throwing down. There was no feel out period. There was no uh, gauging the distance or uh, anything like that. And he was winging elbows at me, and um, <clears throat> you know, and I was just able to. Uh, catch an elbow on him uh, before he was able to catch one on me and he probably did hit me with one or two but um, he, you know that was when he really got me fired up he's throwing some elbows and I was like you want to play the fucking elbow game let's go bro and and winged one at him and and uh, hurt him pretty good and uh, but man he's a real fucking warrior he's a real savage man and 
I love watching him fight to this day. Yeah, he's then he's still going good. He's still going strong. Uh, then we do that that card in uh, in Brazil. I think that's where uh, Verdun lost for. Uh, yes, that was in Curitiba, Brazil. I think that's where the Verdun lost the the war. Yes, for the yep. to to Miocic, right? Yep. Yep. So you you fought Demian Maia in Brazil. I remember I remember that fight. Uh, I, I, what I'm just gonna bring it up because it's 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 Damien yeah. and he was in Brazil and uh, but but we'll keep moving after that. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I mean, I, look, I don't I don't have to take any shame in my losses. I can talk mm. about all of them, man. Like, I, plus you yeah. fought Damien Maia too. It's like it's not like yeah. you're fighting me. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But uh, you know, again, Damien's another one of those guys I just have so much respect for. Had respect for him before the fight and after the fight, and. Um, that was uh, i loved it man i loved the whole experience going down to brazil the crowd was so fucking hostile to me the whole time what yeah they, they not really look if you go out of the place and just walk on the streets they see yeah. you they're gonna come by and hug you and take pictures oh, they all did they all did that was the funny part like I, yeah I was, i was like a little nervous to walk out in the street and uh i have some friends uh, uh fortunately enough they live right next to the hotel i mean they, they walk to the hotel they live right there in curitiba And, uh, you know, they tell me, come outside. I'm like, dude, I don't know if I can. And they're like, nah, man, you'll be fine. I come out and everybody shake my hand and, yeah. and they love me. ask for autograph and everything. But, uh, as a, as a group, when they get together in the crowd, Ooh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it was cool, man. You know, made for a good show and, um, it made it a little bit more exciting for me and, and kept it a little bit of fun. So, uh, we had a, a great time and, um, and that was the fight where, that former coach we were referring to earlier yes. sucker punched me after the fight. So I'm sitting there the Sunday after the fight, he comes up, I'm drinking a cup of coffee and he comes up behind me and, and punches me in the back of the head. And, you oh, know, at first shit. I think, Oh man, these fans are fucking vicious. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Right? And I turn around and I see him running away, you know, this, and I recognized him. I was like, what the fuck? And, um, I always give props to Reed Harris, man, the vice president of UFC and, Uh, he was, I think he's you know, 60 something years old and he was the first guy up and chasing him down, man. And he oh, chased him. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's a, he's a, uh, gangster, man. He's a straight G I have much respect for him <laughs> runs out, chase him outside. And there's a video on YouTube. If you, if you YouTube Rodrigo Bati is his name, okay. uh, you see what happened down the street when he got the living shit beat out of him. Oh, and, I'm gonna look for it. And that was a, uh, one, a friend of mine who To uh, handle that assault for me because I come outside, uh, you know, because I'm chasing him down too, right? And, and I come outside the hotel, and there's a, a huge group of fans right there, and they start like, you know, grabbing me and asking for pictures. And I'm like, no, where'd this fucking guy go? And, you know, they don't know what I'm saying. They just like his mind is like, woohoo, look at him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, so I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'll just take some pictures. Yeah. You know? <laughs> But here, my uh, my friend was there that I said lived right down the street, and he he speaks just a little bit of English. And he said, "Matt, what happened?" I said, "Man, you know, uh, Bachi fucking punched me and ran away." And he says, "Okay, I get him." <laughs> <laughs> and then if you go on YouTube, you see what happened. Holy shit! I'm gonna I'm gonna put so whoever's watching this on YouTube right now, uh, the 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 link is gonna pop up here somewhere. So. If you're, find it. if you're listening on Spotify, well. just just go on the description. I'll put the link there so we can all watch. Let's go to the UFC 206 with Donald Cerrone. Yeah. Uh, um, was, there, was there any animosity between you guys? I, I, do I remember something like something going on? Well, this, you know what? Um, I give it to Donald. I was, I was trying to make some animosity, but I didn't actually have any animosity, and I blame myself for that. That was kind of a dumb thing on my part. Um, but uh, everybody was telling. I kind of let people get in my head a little bit, you know, and and um, everybody was telling me, "Yeah, you got to get in his head. You got to talk shit to him. That's how you beat him," you know. So I kind of tried to a little bit, but that's. Um, I learned my lesson right there. Like it's not natural. That's not me. 
Um, that's not who I am. And he, uh, he, feel, he kind of can feel that too, right? Because everybody tried to do that after the Nick Diaz fight, the Nate yes, Diaz fight. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah, the Nate yeah. Diaz fight. It's like, oh, that's his, uh, his uh, kryptonite. Cri kryptonite. Yeah. yeah. So get in his head, get yeah. in his head kind of thing. But if it's not natural, it doesn't, doesn't have the same nah. effect, right? No, it's not me, man. And uh, I wish I'd never even fucked with it, but I let other people uh, influence me on that. Um, but, you know, I thought we had a great fight, man. You know, um, unfortunately, I made one mistake and he capitalized on yeah. it right away and knocked the fuck out of me. It's the only time I've been knocked out in my life. You know, more power to him. Um, that's one I've always wanted to get back because um, I absolutely feel like I should have won that fight. Um, you know, and I could tell a million reasons about it, but, it, you know, it is what it is, man. Just one of those I'd love to get back. But, um, much respect to Donald, man. You know, he actually he had a good game plan, fought me uh, the right way, um, stayed out of my clinch, stayed away from my elbows, didn't get too close to him. He kept a good distance and um, threw me off a little bit. But, um, you know, uh, Donald's a cool guy, actually, man, you know, and uh, I'd, I'd love to run it back someday. But that would be awesome. Yeah. That would be an, that would be an awesome fight to watch. Yeah. The the one I I was trying to like when when you said that I was trying to uh, that Jake Hellenberger fight was the one he kicked you in the body and you kind of like go back right and and, and like yeah, yeah. yeah okay yeah and it was just it was an early stoppage um, I was just recovering from the body shot and he threw some shots that didn't even touch me and then yeah, yeah I, re I remember that I remember that yeah. what goes in with, with with your body is it, it does it fucking shut because it, it it's not something common to see like especially with you right like you, you kind of like literally like, like oh shit <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it hurts you know like it I've never felt like my body shut down or anything um and that particular one like he you know he got me good uh -huh. I was more he was right like the on liver. the lever kind of thing right uh, I was actually more in the stomach than the liver you oh, know okay. so um, you know, it just kind of hurt my belly. I was just relaxed and I hadn't really warmed. I was just getting kind of warmed up in the fight. And I think, yeah. uh, if, um, uh, if I learned something from that fight, it was, you know, to warm up better in the back and be more prepared. And, um, you know, I was just kind of just getting warmed up and, you know, he's, a, he, he had another guy kind of threw me off, you know, he came out, uh, guns a blazing straight away. And I, I wasn't expecting that out of him at all. And, yeah. um, you know, more power to him, you know, it's good for him, but, uh, um, You know, I, again, I I was hurt, you know, to the body, and I had a I needed to recover for a minute, and um, so I just you know curled up to recover, and I didn't hear the referee say anything like, you know, you got to move or anything They'll like that. They'll just come for your reaction, actually, right? Like it's like, oh, all right, this fight is over. It was like, what the fuck? Just just let yeah. it run. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was I I wish that they would have given me more credit, knowing like. I've been through some fucking wars. Like yeah, no, I, sure. I could come back from this, you know, like yeah. it's just, a, it's just going to take a second. Like, let me just catch my breath and get back to it. But you know, the referee is a tough job. So I, I try not to diss them too much, but I agree. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough job. So uh, they're going to make some mistakes. It's just unfortunate. Their mistakes can, uh, can really affect a motherfucker's paycheck. That's true. Yeah. I agree with that too. I agree with that too. Especially in that case, it's something kind of like not easy, but it's kind of like something not as hard to 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 analyze. Well, if if you're talking like a tough decision that that the the judges give it to someone, uh, unless it's something like brutal, I always understand because they say, look, if we watching again to see who won, that's it. It's like the, the guy's not wrong. Right. <laughs> right? Right. It's like we, we have the, the privilege to be able to come back and watch. It's like, oh, he won that fight. So the guy had to make the decision in one minute. So Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, I try not to be a hater on yeah. judges or referees. Sometimes the judges are completely way the fuck off. Oh, no. Sometimes... That's why I say, like, not always, but it's... Yeah. Yeah. Well, then we're going to talk about that... Uh... I think it's the the highlight of any uh, elbow knockout <laughs> ever. That's your uh, Diego Sanchez fight, right? Yeah, yeah. That was. Um, yeah, but I mean, look, man, Diego. He should have stayed at forty five or fifty five. Um, he should. He doesn't need to be fighting welterweights. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm I'm, I'm proud of you know, having a, a great elbow highlight and everything. Um, 
a, you know. But the fact is, Diego, man, he's a fucking he should be there. Or 55 yeah, man. Exactly. Like, you know, like I, I don't take too much pride in it, you know, than the fact that it was a really good highlight. And, um, you know, Diego kind of uh, sometimes I must even feel bad, man. Like a, uh, that, that was he hooked up with that Fabian guy right after he lost his Holy fucking mind. Holy shit, shit, that was a fucking <laughs> ass. I'm just like. I'm like, man, did I do that to Diego? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but you know what, man? Uh, he also just got me on the, the wrong time, the wrong place, man. I was feeling great at that time. I was full of rage um, after my last few performances. And um, I just trained my fucking balls off and was ready to kill somebody, man. And he was just on the wrong end of the stick on that one. And, um yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is what it is. You got. A, you got another bonus there. Performance of the night. Uh, then we got the win against Ben Saunders, and then you back right. Like, w was there a time in there? I'm trying to see the the timing here. There, there was, there's a big break between 2017. Well, November 17 and then December 19. Uh, that's uh, that's a couple of years. Is that like? you say hey, that was my last fight after the Diego fight kind of thing. You, you, you took yeah, a break and yeah. say, Hey, I, I, I'm done. This is it. And then it's like, fuck it. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I plan on retiring. Well, I, I was supposed to fight. Um, what was it, a couple months after Diego? Um, and I tore my ACL. And at, at that point I was just really drained from uh, training so hard all the time. And, <laughs> I mean, we've went through a lot of my fights and you see like, you know, I had a pretty hefty schedule and fought some real savages and um, it didn't feel like I was performing to the level that I wanted to perform at. Um, and then finally I tore my ACL and I was like, man, I maybe this would be it for me. Um, that's when I opened my gym. And um, yeah, so at that point. Uh, but it didn't take long, man. It, it didn't take long. My ACL healed up real quick i felt real good and 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 as soon as my acl started feeling good again i was like i was hungry ready to go yeah, back in man. exactly and, and and especially like i i think you you, you were a kind of like down to work guy that you, you're not you you still competing in a high level it, it, it's not like that 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 kind of like veteran that gets to that like it's like oh shit like diego we were just talking about it's like this guy should not be fucking you know we we respect the guy and everything but he wants to compete in a high level he has a name they they're just they're just not gonna fucking throw him with a guy that's just coming up and and, and it, it's just how the game is so well they will <laughs> well the, the the coming up i mean like a, a guy with like with very little experience and and, and throw that that that's kind of what i'm trying like they, they're gonna try to make him a a step up for for whoever he's fighting you know and and, 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 sure. and that and that's brutal because like i say like the guy there is trying to rip your head off <laughs> so yeah if you're not in that level anymore you need you need to recognize just like we just saw with with uh anderson right like that fight with uh raya hall that was fuck he was he's you, you look at the guy he's fighting great he's just two seconds lower than uriah on everything Sure. And, yeah. and rise and, that, and that's all. He's moving well, but he's just like a little slower. And that in that level, it costs it costs him a lot. So yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate. It happens to the best of us, man. Exactly, exactly. Then uh, it's it's the one before the your your latest fight, uh, the one with Carlos Condit. And I, I'm gonna bring it. That's one of my all time favorite fighters. And, and 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 so are you i guess we get a little older like i i remember like the great nights of fighting i remember you fighting i remember carlos condit fighting i remember nate and, and nick and, and 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 now like i watch a lot because of the show and we do like a like a news episode on, on every monday so i have to watch so i can, I, I can talk about it but it's like when i see you there it's, it's just like You know, it brings us that, that that good feeling that's like, oh shit, let's go, and it's gonna be a good fight too. So, how how was it? I was I was broken hearted. I couldn't I couldn't pick a winner for that fight. And uh, how was it? How was it uh, for you with 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 that fight? Um, well, like you said before, man, I, I thought I won the fight. 
Um, un- unfortunately, they gave it to him. Uh, but it was close, man. Like, we're, we're very similar skill sets, very sk- similar levels. Um, you know, and I felt that way through the whole fight, man. I felt like, like wow, like, we're really close on everything here. And um, I, it, it threw me off a little bit. Like, I had the fight before that I lost to Beza where, um, with the corona where where there was no crowd, you know. And, and yeah. that shit, I don't really don't like that stuff, man. My, I feel like I finally got used to it in my last fight. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, it just throws me off a little bit, man. But I uh, feel like I finally got more comfortable with it uh, in my last fight and was able to uh, kind of put that stuff to the side. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just I, I respect Carlos, man. I'm, I'm so happy that uh, we finally got to fight, and I'd love to do it again with him someday, man. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That, hey, that, that would be an awesome fight, too. That would yeah, be an yeah. awesome one to redo it, too, for sure. For sure, and then uh, this that uh, we'll we'll roll back to uh, last month. Oh no, shit! In August already, so we'll go back to June, June nineteen. Uh, you fought uh, Diego Lima. Uh, everybody in Brazil knows him mostly because of his brother, the uh, uh, Douglas, right? The the not not anymore either, but uh, he was the the Bellator champ, and uh, and you got performance of the night. That was a, that was a beautiful fight too, man. Yeah, me and Diego actually go back a long way, man. Of course, I felt I, I fought his uh, brother a long time ago, and uh, I, I think it was like right at the beginning of your career you fought Douglas, right? I was... Yeah, I, I, uh, I was a young pro. Yeah, in 2007. Yeah, and he was sort of the prodigal child back then, right? I didn't even know. I mean, I took the fight. I don't remember how long, but uh, they brought basically brought me down to Atlanta. <laughs> and I had no idea that I was the main event. I had no idea who Douglas Lima was. And I kind of get down there and everybody's like, oh, you're the one fighting Douglas? <laughs> oh. Oh, that's great to hear, right? right. Like a, like, oh. Good luck, buddy. Holy you know, shit. And I'm like, well, who the fuck is this guy? Like, why is everybody talking like this? You know? <laughs> and uh, ended up fighting him. And, um, you know, that guy, he, he kicked my legs harder than anybody's ever kicked my legs in my life. Holy man. And shit. I remember... I couldn't walk for two weeks after that fight, man. Oh, wow. that, was, that was brutal. And apparently Diego kicks pretty hard too. You know, my leg wasn't feeling too good after that either. Really? But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, you know, me and Diego, uh, sorry, I got another it's call right. there. You know, um, me, uh, so me and Diego go way back. And then I, I was coaching on the ultimate fighter with D- TJ Dillashaw, which uh, Diego was on there. I trained with them a little bit on there, so that was, that was pretty cool. And then um, I coached Jesse Taylor in the finals against Diego. Uh-huh. So I so I had already studied Diego. I had uh, replicated Diego. I fought his brother. Uh, you know, so it, it felt like a long history. And I see and it was very very familiar, Jesse, right? Very familiar, and me and Diego were uh, very cool. I think he's a great guy, a uh, very cool person, and. Uh, a great fighter. Um, I think he's probably better than he showed when I fought him. Like I just, I knew him so well and um, just kind of had his number and that happens I, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That happens. And, and I, again, for me, I mean, I, I just felt on that night too. I don't think anybody would have beat me that night. I just felt on, I just felt sharp and everything felt great and all the pieces fell into place for camp so that's awesome uh, How, how's your uh, your contract with UFC how many fights do you still have uh, we, we're talking renewal we're gonna we're gonna do this for 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 a few more years what, what, what are you feeling right now like I just said like you, you, you've been doing pretty damn good so it, it it's like and you love to fight too so how how what, what's in your mind mm, to be honest I don't even know what my contract is. <laughs> yeah, I probably should. I know what they pay me. Um, every single time that I've had a contract renewal, they've given me a raise, uh, whether I was coming off a win or a loss. Um, they give me a significant raise every time. Um, and I really don't even discuss it with them. I don't have a manager or anything. Oh. Um, so I don't even mess with that. Like I, I just call... Sean or Dana, myself, and give me a fight. Uh, yeah, just say, "Hey, I'm ready to fight," and they get me a fight. Um, I, I just never been that guy, man. Like I, I just I love fighting, and 
I'm just so happy and feel blessed to be able to live this lifestyle that I live. And that's awesome. Um, you know, maybe I could be make more money if I was doing differently or whatever, but uh, I live a great lifestyle and I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at. And, um, the way I'm feeling right now, I might have another five, six years left. Um, I'll obviously a lot could change in five or six years. So, oh, yeah. so we'll, uh, we'll, you know, we'll take it fight by fight and, and we'll go to the wheels fall off. Nice. How, so, uh, you, well, we're looking to, to, for another fight this year still, right? Maybe. Maybe. It might take, it might take until next year. Okay. Still, still, I'm actually still injured from the Diego fight. I'm literally oh, just, okay. uh, I broke my toe before the fight Oof. and, um, it had almost healed up and then I broke it again during the fight. So, yeah. um, it's, I'm actually just now able to push off on it again. So, um, we'll just see how that yeah, goes. Yeah, I might have to take a break then. And and then coming back and any in do do you ask for it or is it like hey uh, give me this guy, give me that guy? Because like I said, like we have we have some great uh, rematches or 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 some nice surprises to see with you. Is there anyone you have in mind? Everybody asked that, but I just I'm just I'm just curious here. It's like it's not like the journalistic way to finish but i'm curious like who the fuck you want to fight next because i love to watch <laughs> I, i you know i i'm you know the, the cowboy rematch is appealing i don't think he's gonna fight at 170 anymore though mm. uh maybe maybe he would to rematch me i don't know uh but you know the, the first well first first things first i don't like asking for rematches i don't like when ask people ask for rematches um you know you get your 15 minutes and And uh, if, if you don't get it done that time, then you didn't deserve the rematch. You know, um, I think the time and place for rematches is when you know either fighting for a title and they've earned their way back to a title, or when it's um, uh, you know maybe a bullshit fight or or a bullshit loss that you know you, you clearly uh, judges shouldn't have given to, or you know there's certain situations. But you know when someone beats you, they beat you and you move on. So I don't like asking for rematches, but. With that said, um, I would just be excited. And, it would be an awesome love, fight, exactly. Yeah, and I, I would just love to do it, and um, I would approach it a little differently. And uh, like I said, I respect Cowboy, and um, that would be my my first pick if I had the choice. Um, but, um, you know, I also mentioned before uh, um, fighting Damian Maya for his retirement fight, which would be a, a great honor for me. He, he kind of – he made a post about it and pretty much turned it down already. So, you know – Uh, that probably won't happen, but well, uh, yeah, I but think he was, that, he was looking to do that last fight in Brazil, and that's not going to happen for a while because it's yeah, that's going to be a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, you know, I, I don't have anybody really particularly in mind. I, 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 I never really have called people out or anything. I just they call me and I say, okay, let's go. That's awesome. Hey, uh, where where can we uh, buy your coffee? Theimmortalcoffee.com. Theimmortalcoffee.com. So the link is going to be. On the description of the YouTube video, I, I, I'll put a link on the Spotify link. I'm not sure if people can click on it though, but uh, the immortalcoffee.com will we'll, we'll have it on the screen. I'm buying mine. And nice. uh, Matt, thank you so much for your time. We were way over than uh, than I gotta say it was. But it, it was it was <laughs> an awesome, but it was it was very 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 fun. So I'm gonna take thank my you. time and 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 caption all of these and. Uh, I'll shoot you a message when, when it goes live with links and stuff like that. We'll post. We'll stay in touch. Anything I can do for you in the show, count me in. Uh, whatever you need to promote, let me know. I'll be uh, glad. Uh, I'll be happy to help. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good day, man. Yeah, you too, brother. Thank you.